everybody. It's Tuesday night. Good to see you again. And it's January 12th, and this is another video blog from Whole Heart of Ministries. I'm Jessica Heilman, and this is my husband, Jeff Heilman. And we are coming to you live tonight to talk to you about um, the question of the week. And this question of the week has come up repeatedly this week, so I believe that it has been confirmed that this is a question that we're supposed to answer. And the, exa the question is, how do I know if it's God speaking to me? Or, in other words, how do I hear from God? And I think that this is a very important question. It keeps coming up. A lot of Christians say, well, God told me to do this, or, or I was driving along and I heard God say this. And um, new Christians, I think, get pretty overwhelmed by that statement because they don't know yet if that's God or not. And um, they don't quite know. They haven't tuned their ears into that, I don't know, radio frequency, if you would say as to um, how do they know if they're hearing from God or not. So before we get started, and before I ask my lovely husband to answer this question in his own my words. Lovely. You're lovely. I hope so. <laughs> my lovely question to answer in his own words. Um, I did glean from um, a message that I heard a few years back by uh, Creflo Dollar and World Changers Ministries that he answered these questions. He says these are the questions to ask when you want to confirm whether you're hearing from God or not, maybe if you're just getting started. Um, that's number one, is does what you heard require faith? Number two, does what you heard require courage? Number three, does what you hear heard go against reason and rationalization of the world? And number four, does what you heard line up with the written word? And that's pretty, number four is a pretty key component because if you don't know anything about God or the word, um, you might be, you know, you might feel like you're being led to do something in and uh, it might be against his word and you just really need to know by definition the the things in the word don't you say wouldn't you think I think so and I think that I think that that's you know you can get by and I think that God will give you the grace to say things you know pretty simply in the beginning before you make major life decisions towards you know am I moving to Africa or not but uh, he'll, he's, he's good. He's a good follower. He even says in, uh, he's a good, he's good to his followers. He even says in John uh, 14, 16, he says that he sent us a helper and that that helper will always be with us. And that helper that he's talking about is the Holy Spirit. And if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you can trust that you will be able to hear from him. Now it's just how do we tune into that frequency? And that's kind of what we want to try to cover in these 10 minutes. So once again, to recap real quick, those four is, does what you hear required faith? Does what you hear require courage? Does what you hear go against the reason and rationalization of the world? And uh, number four, does what you hear line up with the written word? And that's pretty pretty basic. So my question to you, honey, that I would hope that you would be able to answer for the followers, for the viewers, is I've heard you say... God told me to do this. God told me to go there. God told yeah. me to take this job. God did not tell me to take that job. And as a matter of fact, there was a period in our most recent history for about seven months where God was telling us to not go hurry up and get a job, but to do his work instead, which he was leading us. And we were going daily, moment by moment, like what to do next? What do we do next, God? And, and this whole year, this whole last year of 2009, this whole ministry was founded by just listening Right. moment by moment what to do next and, and surrendering what we thought we wanted to well you just show us what to do and it was a lot of listening and a lot of guiding from him so how would you put that into words to a new Christian how, how do they know you say that this current job that you're in right now doesn't have it's it's not it's back end loaded it doesn't have a lot big fancy package happening right now so in on the surface it might not look like you know everything's pouring down in waves of golden grain, but we know that that's coming. We know that a lot of what his word is is sowing and reaping, and so we're in a big sowing season right now. How do you know, how are you confident this time, unlike others, that you've heard from God and that this is what you're supposed to do? How did you differentiate to just do this instead of go work for some big company and have the big package right away? Well, that's such a good question, and, and people ask those types of things because uh, we do a lot in addition to the video blog and the wholehearted ministries blog and the uh, ministry that you do um, publicly we also do a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations whether it's through Facebook or I had a coffee meeting today with a friend and just going over career decisions and how to really 
look at um, making the right calls. And I would say that first off, it really comes down to identifying your values and the values that God puts in the Word. When you have an opportunity to make a decision on something, it's there is there should be peace of mind. And there may be a little bit of sense of trepidation for people who are doing something big that is a big decision, like a job change or getting married. I can understand that, and that we certainly have, have had times where there was a little bit of discomfort or just maybe a disorientation because we were acting in faith on something that was pretty big. But for the most part, faith-based decisions, when you're calm and at peace and in the Word, faith-based decisions are, are much easier, I think, to make than the, the decisions where things just aren't going right and activities aren't lining up the way that they need to line up. And uh, so I hope that answers answers your question to me, but it really should be something simple, easy, peace of mind throughout the entire decision making process. And at the end, you'll you'll end up with a decision that's in line with your values, with things that are important to you, and you can feel good about living your values instead of instead of just talking about them. And do you think? I think I was talking to a Gal this week about being feeling inspired and feeling like you're, you're just inclined to do something really good for somebody else and it might be something silly like oh that you know you, you're looking at a painting on the wall like I did this I, I had a painting that I just you know didn't didn't really think was it was it didn't fit our taste anymore we didn't have any room for it and I had an I had somebody's name come into my mind then I felt oh I need to go give it to this person and so here I am walking with this huge painting through the offices, you know, looking like a total complete fool with this big painting through the office and this big oil painting. And I just, I felt led that I needed to give it to this gal and, and I gave it to her and, and she was just like, wow, that's exactly my taste. That's exactly my style. How did you know? I can't believe it. And, and I think that, you know, the more little things that we do and we're not afraid to miss it and we're not afraid to look stupid, that that builds confidence okay. in hearing from God and that he can trust that he'll give us more important things to do and and more and more things to do as we listen and we hear because we know that giving giving to anybody um, being obedient to his word being not maybe just his not just the audible word but when it says to do something in the word to being obedient to his word that those build confidence that builds up our faith that builds up our confidence that we do hear from God and now even though we don't necessarily hear, you need to do this, we do hear in our spirit, oh, I, you know, that's a really good idea, and, and I'm really thinking about somebody. Yeah, and I'll, I'll give you an example. Yesterday, um, yesterday I was, actually Sunday, excuse me, I was going to the office to do some cleanup work, and I didn't really have anything on my mind. I had my iPod going, I was relaxed, I was praying, and, and just at peace and enjoying the opportunity to go to work on a Sunday night um, when there was no pressure. And I got almost all the way to the office, and it wasn't audible, but I could I could really feel God pressing me, saying, you need to go back to the mall, go take your laptop in, and have the folks at the uh, Apple Store take a look at it. And it, it had been running a little bit slow, and I was thinking about you know, going in and having an appointment later in the week. Um, but... But it just was very, very real that God said, go do this and, and take care of this uh, detail immediately. So it was a little difficult because I was almost to the office and I was looking forward to relaxing and having some time and not being in the road. But I went ahead and, and did what I believed God was telling me at the time to do. This is, you know, two days ago. And, um, and as it turned out, after about an hour at the Mac store, there were a couple of things that I needed to have done to my computer which when we upgraded it, something had to do with partitioning memory, um, so it would run a little faster. I got into the office first thing Monday morning, and my boss's computer crashed right before a huge presentation that we needed to do. And if I hadn't gone to the Apple Store and gotten my computer up and running because of the apps I needed to run for the presentation, we would have had to reschedule that meeting, and that meeting was, was uh, valuable from a revenue perspective, but also it was um, something that we committed to be ready to present. To that customer at the time, so that's that's my most recent example. That's awesome. Of that's awesome. From God. So inspiring from God, inspiration from God, and confirming His word. God, is this what yeah. you want me to do? Yes, Amen. Bye, guys. Love you. See you next week.